All right, so in the last lesson, we had a little mini lesson on how to solve two step equations. Today, we're going to look at word problems that translate into two step equations, and then, of course, now you'll be able to solve them. Um, so let's take a look at the do now, where we have a little bit more practice to remember how we solve those two step equations. So let's uh, go ahead and check out those answers real quickly. All right, take a look at these answers and note how we'd use the circle strategy on these, where I circle the small, uh, the number and the letter together, and then put a big circle around everything else. I do the big circle first, so I'm, that's why I subtract one. Remember the other method we talked about was using PEMDAS in reverse. It's the same thing. All right, for, so for number three, this is a introductory example of what we're going to be doing today. And uh, I highlighted some of the words and numbers that are important here. So in these problems, a lot of times there's like a starting amount or an introductory amount. And that's the constant. That's the number that's by itself. And then there's a number that goes with a variable where there's a multiplication involved. So $1.49 per song so that we know that we're going to multiply $1.49 times the number of songs that we download. And uh, the unknown, of course, is the number of songs. So that leads to uh, an expression or an equation. So $10 plus $1.49 times each song, and that equals the total cost. So that's what we're going to be practicing today. All right, uh, let's quickly take a look at the homework answers. So these are more just two-step uh, equation practice, and the one step I didn't do was the last one. So, for example, I really need to do the division for that one to get the final answer. Same thing here. I need to undo the multiplication with division. Here I need to undo the multiplication with division. Oh, and I realize I have the wrong answer here. Uh, so that's going to actually be x equal to 5. And then, of course, on this one, the operation is uh, division. So we have to multiply by 2 on both sides. And that's how I get the 14. All right, so let's take a look at some example problems. Go ahead and turn to the next page, please. All right, so we have um, a situation here. A farmer at the farmer's market sells asparagus for $3 per bundle and broccoli for $2 per bundle. So there's that key word again, per, which means we're going to be doing um, some multiplication, right? So for every bundle of asparagus, we multiply by 3. For every bundle of broccoli, we multiply by 2. And let's take a look at the actual question here. So Sebastian and Gabe buy some broccoli bundles, which means we don't know how many, and five bundles of asparagus. And we have a total cost. And we see the keyword is, which means there's going to be an equal sign involved, right? So first of all, we have five bundles of asparagus. Well, we know how much that costs, because asparagus is $3 per bundle. So of our total cost, we know we at least have 3 times 5. So part of our total cost is going to be 15. The other part of our cost is the broccoli, but we don't know how much broccoli we bought. But we do know it's $2 per bundle. So I'm going to write that as 2 times B, which stands for broccoli. But in this case, we know what the total cost is. So we can set that equal to 19. So again, we know 
how much the cost of the asparagus is because we know how much asparagus we bought. We don't know how much um, broccoli we got, so we're just going to multiply that unknown times $2, and we know the total cost is 19 All right, this is a circle problem. This is a two-step equation. We know how to do this. So I'm going to use circle the number and the letter, put a big circle around everything else. So we know that we undo that big circle first, so we have to subtract 15 from both sides. Remember, we always have to balance. If we make a change to the left, we have to make the same change to the right. That leaves us with 2b equals 14. And then we have to undo the multiplication with division on both sides. And, oops, I'm sorry, that's not 4, that 14, that's 4. Let's erase that one. Sorry about that. And so we know that we brought, uh, bought two bundles of broccoli. Okay, I'm going to write that down. That's two bundles of broccoli. All right. So there's an example of a problem that translates to a two-step equation. And then, of course, we solved it with the method we've been working with. All right, turn to the next page, please. So this is a common problem where you are comparing two situations that have a different cost to them, and you're trying to decide, you know, which is the better deal. So in this case, we have some bike rentals. And um, one charges $9.00 as a flat fee plus three per hour and the other one doesn't have a flat fee but it charges more per hour so you're trying to figure out well which one is better you know I have to pay something up front for this one but it's less per hour no upfront money but it's more per hour so we're trying to figure out maybe what the best deal might be so first we need to write a couple of equations and we're going to use the information of course in these two posters. So, of course, we have a per, right, which tells us we're going to be multiplying. And then, you know, this $9, again, this is like a starting point number. That's often the constant, the number by itself. So let's talk about Bob first. Um, we need an equation, and we know that the cost to rent from Bob is going to be starting point of nine dollars that's what it costs no matter how many hours and then we know that we're going to add to that three dollars per hour now we're calling this an equation because we know this is equal to the total cost which we're calling c for now so we do have two variables in this equation now the cycle center is actually more simple, right? Because there is no starting fee like we have here. It's just simply $5 per hour. So we know that, that is a little more easy to write that the total cost will just be five times the number of hours that they rent the bike. So what I'd like you to do in this table is to just figure out the cost for different values of H. So for one hour, for two hours, for three hours, for four hours. And that'll allow us to compare it a little better. So for example, in that first uh, row, for one hour, we know it's going to cost $9 plus Nine dollars plus three times one because I'm putting one hour into H and that evaluates to twelve dollars and then for the cycle center that's going to be five times one 
and that of course is just five dollars so you can see if they just rent for one hour that you probably want to go with the cycle center because it's only going to be a five dollar total now I'd like you to fill out the rest of the table and um, just substitute 2 in for H into both equations and we're going to compare the costs for up to four hours. So go ahead and pause the video, complete the rest of the table, and then come back and we'll check the amounts that you got. All right, so there are the amounts for each different uh, hours that you could be renting the bike. So, uh, in every case, Bob's is more expensive than uh, the cycle center. And notice there's a pattern to these numbers as well. Um, if you can see that pattern, that's going to help you with some future work that we do. Now, what I'd like you to do is let's do one more row. Let's do this for five hours. And you can either do the math or you can see the pattern. But uh, go ahead and pause the video just for a second and uh, do it for five hours and we're going to compare that answer. All right, now take a look. So finally, if you're going to rent for five hours, then for the first time, Bob's is the cheaper amount and Cycle Center is more expensive. So if you're renting for one, two, three, or four hours, the Cycle Center is going to be your cheapest uh, uh, deal. However, if you rent for five hours, Cycle Center suddenly becomes the more expensive one and Bob's is just a little bit cheaper. So you can see how they work together and over time how one deal suddenly becomes the better deal. All right, so let's take a look at number two. So we're finally given uh, a cost to deal with, right? She ends up paying 27, so we know what the C value is. And we're going to uh, see how many hours that uh, it that she rented the bike for, for the cost to be $27. So we're going to take the Bob's equation and that's going to be, we now have a cost and look what we have, another two-step equation, a circle equation. So go ahead and uh, pause the video and figure out what the number of hours is and come back and check your answer. All right, check out the answer. Um, subtract 9 from both sides, divide by 3, and turns out that's how much the cost uh, that would be for 6 hours. It, uh, the cost ended up being $27. All right, go ahead and turn to the next page, please, and we'll look at another example. All right, I'm going to have you work on this on your own from start to finish. So uh, go ahead and answer questions one, two, and three. And what I want you to notice, though, is the number that they give you, what does that represent? And what does it represent in the equation? So it's not the same in each one. So you have to really think about um, how you use the equation in number one to answer uh, questions two and three. So go ahead and pause the video and um, come back and check your answers. All right, check out these answers. So our equation is we have a starting amount of 20, 30 cents per download, and we add those together, that gives us our total cost. In number two, 
they're giving us the total cost. So we set our cost expression equal to the total cost. This is a two-step equation. So I do a circle problem and I undo the 20 first, divide both sides by 0.3. Um, you can do that uh, by longhand, it's not that difficult. We did this first semester. Divide by 0.3 and we get that they downloaded 21 songs and that's what led to a total cost of $26.30. Now in number three they're telling you how many songs he downloaded. So that doesn't go into T, that goes into D. So this is not a two-step equation. This is simply one that I evaluate because I have 20 plus 0.3 times 12 I do the multiplication first, I get 3.6, then I add to the 20, and that gives me my total cost of T. So you need to be very careful with where you plug this number into, make sure you plug it into the right variable, and decide if you need to do a two-step equation strategy or if you just need to evaluate it to get the final answer. All right, I think we have one more example, so go ahead and turn to the next page, please. All right, this problem is sim similar to the uh, cycling problem we did earlier, so I'm going to have you work on this on your own from beginning to end. So go ahead and pause the video and answer all of these questions, and then come back and check your answers. All right, check out these answers. So here's our two-seat equation. We have 45 per day, so there's multiplication going on there, and then a one-time fee of $25. For the single-seat canoe, it says 25 per day, and that's it, just that rate. So I substituted one, two, three, and four into both of these equations, and got these numbers and notice again there's a pattern here these numbers are increasing by 45 each time these numbers are increasing by 25 each time so if I add one more row into the table for five days again I substitute five into this equation and that gives me 250 substitute five into this equation that gives me 125 and of course the single seat canoe is going to be a lot cheaper um, and that just makes sense because not only is it more per day but there's also an extra fee so the single seats pretty much always going to be the cheaper deal um, but if you have more than one person that's not going to work all right so Jeremiah rented a canoe for six days he paid 150 so I had to figure out if I put six into which equation do I get 150 and I think just kind of looking at these numbers, you can guess that the single seat canoe gives us 150 for six days. So um, if he wants to pay the least amount of money, um, he should go with the single seat, which looks like that's what he did. All right, so uh, let me know if you have any questions. There's one more page of some uh, practice two-step equations in the packet that you can do. And uh, if you finish those, then you can uh, start working on the homework. Again, let me know if you have any questions.